and welcome back to Columbus, Ohio for our coverage of Origins 2017. I'm Eric Summerer here with Jeff Sayadek from Guerrilla Games and you have proudly delivered a giant box of stuff. It is a big box of joy here. Battle, Battle stations. stations. This is the second edition of, right. of a game. This has probably been your biggest hit. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, Lifeboat ha has certainly gotten into more languages, but that's a little easier to translate than this bomb of cardboard we have here. <laughs> so. When I, we released Battle Stations in 2004, uh, my brother Jason said, I want to make it a treasure box full of stuff. But that was before Kickstarter yep. and before we could do plastic. And now okay. we got this new edition. We finally got the Kickstarter backers. Thank you. So we could really make this thing happen. So I, I have to show this. This is the, this is the, the boards and the counter sheets. But yes. that is a gigantically, let's put that in the close-up camera right there. That is a thick pile of cardboard yes and that's all in this box this is the the maps as well as the counters for this yep. game counters and then like modules this is a whole bunch of stuff yeah and if you played the original edition i love the old art and the new art uh is just even better mm. uh, steve hamilton uh the guy who did a number of other projects i said oh i want this guy for my art and we got him so it was great so okay so let's say we've never heard of of battle stations before what what's the system Battle Stations is the game of heroic starship adventure. You get to be a character uh, on, board, on board a ship. So here, let, me, let me steal one of these here. Take one of those. So your character is going to be actually in the modules. You punch these modules out and rearrange them. And so your characters are going to run around on the ship. And you'll have things to... Uh, uh, so each of the players has a character. And you'll have like a sample character card. These are the, the sample characters that you'll start with. And eventually, because it's an ongoing campaign, You'll uh, transfer your character over to a character sheet, and you'll be able to track your character's progress as you get more special abilities, treasure, and equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, the nuts and bolts of it are that you're on a starship, and you're, the enemy is like, it's all versus one type of game. The enemy controls the enemy starship or the navigation hazards, whatever else is going on okay. in the galaxy. And uh, so each mission is really self-contained. There's a mission objective. Destroy that ship or find this antidote or decode this thing or get out of this uh, navigation hazard. And uh, so it's, it's like a board game because it's very specific mission objectives. Yep. But it's like a role-playing game because your character continues. And there's also campaign rules so that you can go and, and fight a, a campaign. Wow. Uh, so cooperative against one player. Yes. Um, and you can play it. Uh, I've actually been playing it a lot lately. Uh, cooperative without it. Uh, unmoderated. Uh, my friend okay. Neil Softy helped me develop some rules for so you could play without any... Uh, without a referee, that everybody sort of collectively decides, oh, well, now the enemy's going to do this. And uh, there's, hmm. a, there's a flow chart for the things they do. OK. Now I see you've got, there's a rule book. Yes. And then there's this gigantic tome. Yes. So the 32-page rule book that comes with the boxed game, this guy uh, has everything you need to play. And by page 11, you're playing. And it brings you into the missions and teaches you as you go along. OK. And once you have played this, you're going to say, wow, but what about uh, upgrades and cyberware and a uh, whole bunch of there's missions in there from uh, James Ernest and Richard Garfield and wow. J.R. Honeycutt just everybody I could find throughout the industry they said sure I'll give you a mission idea and we wrote something up huh okay so, and that's all included in the box no this is not in the box this is this is okay. this is the 300 but <laughs> after you punch all those counters uh, then the book will fit then in there's the box room. okay all right um, how soon can we see it where do we get it it is, I actually only have a few here at the show to show off and give to my fabulous friends at the Dice Tower. Uh, <laughs> I saw Tom run off with one earlier, yes. <laughs> so uh, we've got, uh, but it will be in stores uh, in July. Okay. And it'll be officially debuting at, uh, at Gen Con. Uh, price for the box, price for the book? Box game is $100 and the book is $60. Okay. And it's, uh, I, I am really proud of it, really. Oh. It, I know you've been working on it for a while. I mean, you, this has sort of been brewing for, yeah. for some time. Uh, so it's, it's nice to see the smile on your face yes. holding the finished, yes, finished it's, it's product. Good. I still don't have it all out there yet, so it, we're not out of the woods yet, but it's about to get on boats. All right. Uh, GorillaGames.com? Uh, GorillaBoardGames.com. GorillaBoardGames.com. Yes. Remember, GorillaBoardGames.com for Battle Station's second edition. Jeff, thank you very much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thanks for watching. All right, Jeff just sat down at the Q&A table. So what we're going to do here is uh, I need you to hold that up. All right. And we've got just a few questions that our listeners have shot us uh, concerning Battle Stations. And uh, we want you to get uh, uh, 
uh, just the answers for them basically. Uh, first one, which is really inconsequential, but how much does the game weigh? Uh, it weighs four kilos for this, and the book weighs, uh, I think, two kilos. So six altogether. Yes. All right. But the, the book is sold separately, yes, right? Yes, book yeah. sold separately. Okay. Now, that kind of leads me into a, a, another question. How much of the rule book, this rule book, is like fluff? How much of it is actual rules? Um, well, I'd say it's maybe 30% fluff. It, it's really, uh, it's actual rules, but it's actual rules that you don't need. Yeah. Unless you've got them. Like, there's rules for a disintegrator which really you don't need unless you're about to get disintegrated. Then all of a sudden, it's really important to know how that works. <laughs> yeah, you kind of want to know how a disintegrator works, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Um, now, is there going to be a PDF version of the book available? Yes, there will be a PDF version available, uh, absolutely. We, I just, the day before I left, I got our uh, layout guy, Dan Blanchett, to uh, work on the, the PDF, and he said he'd have it ready tomorrow, but th tomorrow was yesterday, and I'm gone, so gotcha. I'll have it next week. Understood. Okay. Um, how much? How does combat work? Uh, because we we had limited time frame over there, so just a brief rundown on how that works. Sure. So uh, the, the sequence of play is that the ships move on the hex map, mm -hmm. and then the characters, based on their speed, and then the characters take their actions. So their actions could be to turn the ship by taking a helm action, spending helm power, mm. or it could be to uh, shoot the cannons at an enemy ship, or, or it could be shoot somebody on board your ship. So if you're going to shoot somebody on board your ship, you're going to make a com everything in the game is two dice, and uh, add your skill against the target number. So if somebody has a human as a target number of eight, it means you have to roll an eight or better on two dice to hit him. Okay. So if you have at least a one or two skill, you're likely to hit very often. Okay. Uh, if you're in your profession, you get to re-roll one of the dice. So Marines get to re-roll combat, pilots get to re-roll uh, piloting, and, and etc. So if you want to shoot uh, another ship, the difficulty is the distance in hexes plus double their speed. So if they're going speed three and they're six hexes away, you're going to need a 12 to hit them. Okay. So you'll, uh, and you, again, you're going to add your combat skill to that. So a okay. Marine's going to be good at that. And something really important for the game is that everybody can do everything. Okay. So if, if your pilot happens to be dead uh, and you're the Marine, you've got zero piloting skill, you might need a 12 to turn the ship, but you've got to go try to do that. And Got one it. of the, my favorite mechanics in the game is luck where uh, you have a limited num number of luck, five plus your ranks, you start with six, and that's the number of times you can reroll something during the game. Okay. So at the beginning of the game, if you get hit for 12 points of damage, you know, two dice that come up each sixes, um, you're probably gonna spend luck on, luck on that because it would knock you out. Yeah. So you'll spend a few luck points and knock that damage down to where it's survivable and then go find somebody with a med kit. Uh, but what that does is it creates the drama of now my luck is running low, as opposed to some game where you just get hit for 12 points and you're out. Yeah. So I, I, I really like that. And then if you get hit again for 12 points later and you're out of luck, well, you're just out of luck. But by then, it's a, it's a dramatic, you know, right. end, to the, end to a combat. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Uh, now, how much of a... Uh, is there a story element and how deeply will it go in the game? The, uh, the story is... Yes, the, the story is... It, I tried to make it not generic, but but it it hears what people are have coming from. I had people say, "Oh, was Firefly a big influence?" And the the short answer is no, mm -hmm. because as soon as we went to press with the first uh, edition, uh, we we got the Firefly C DVDs and watched them and said, "Oh my God, this is great! This would have been a great influence." Right. Uh, but it sort of seeped in by the time we did second edition. Gotcha. So there's. Uh, but the idea is that anything that happens in a science fiction universe, you can build your campaign around that. Gotcha. And, uh, so there, the story here is that there's a galactic, galactic civil war going on. There's a, uh, and you can take either side of it. Uh, you can say that the, the Republic is evil, or you can say that the rebellion is evil, and whichever way you want to play it, okay. you're on the right side. All right, cool. Uh, so what's a good player count for somebody just starting off? I, it's it's really optimized for about four or five players and an enemy. Okay. Um, you can certainly. I've been playing some campaigns with uh, two or three of us, and it's a little rough because if you don't have all of the rules filled, you get to fill them with bots, and the bots just have sort of minimal skills. Gotcha. Uh, the mission difficulty is scaled based on the uh, the ranks of the players and the number of players. So uh, the the missions will get easier, but it's still pretty hard to manage a ship when you don't have somebody that's pumping the engine. Gotcha. And Understood. All that. All right, and then what about campaign mode? How does it handle uh, players dropping in and out and all that kind of stuff? Uh, each of the missions is really modular. There's okay. a mission, go here and do that. And so if somebody's gonna have the misfortune of having an anniversary next Sunday, which is our Battle Stations Day, <laughs> then 
their character is on shore leave uh, while the rest of us are off on the camp, uh, off on the mission. Okay. So uh, instead of having that great engineer that's always cranking for a lot of power, we're going to have a bot in there that can pump a little bit of power. Gotcha. And and the bot's not going to uh, raise the mission difficulty the same way that awesome character. Will. Cool. Gotcha. All right. And then uh, what are the? I know there's probably a lot, but what are the basic differences between advanced and core rules? Uh, so the, you mean the the original core? Well, the uh, I'll. The rules in the box are basically a little simpler and they're missing the uh, upgrades and cyberware and that sort of stuff that, that advances it. Um, and then I think the question might have been the original rules uh, from okay. the original book. Maybe so. And, and the, the thing there is that ships got a lot faster. Okay. That uh, One of the things I learned in playtesting was that when people ask you the same question, when 10 different people ask you the same question and you always have to say, no, no, that's not the way it works, they're actually right and you're wrong. Gotcha. So, uh, people would, I would say, here's your ship's speed, and they'd say, that's how many hexes we go each phase, right? And I used to have to say, no, there's this chart that you look at to see yeah, where you go. And right. now I say, yeah, your speed is how fast <laughs> you go. That's, that's right. the way it works. So ships move a lot faster. So before, you literally move maybe 20 hexes over the course of a whole six phase or 12 phase mission. Yeah. Now uh, you're going to move that many phases, you know, five or six phase, or three or four phases, hexes a phase. So yeah. ships are a lot faster. Um, uh, ship size is now figured based on one third of the modules okay. instead of again a sort of weird formula thing. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, and uh, the ship. Uh, the main thing is we went to one inch squares and so it's now compatible with any one inch minis. So okay. people really like that. That's good. Uh, but but the rules there haven't changed. So if you're playing with the original book, you could actually get the PDF or, or the new book and and it, you're not going to have the beautiful yes. new art, but I love the old art. I know. And, right. and it's, it's still fully, you know, the squares are in the same place. Yeah. So everything's compatible. And yeah. One of the things we, I mean, we played this years ago when we, when we all lived in Korea. And one of the things I remember thinking while we were playing is, man, this needs miniatures. Yes. And now you've got them. So I, I just thought that was really neat. I, well, that's what we wanted. And uh, really, it wouldn't be possible without the help of Kickstarter and yeah. the backers out there that said, yeah. hey, yes, go ahead and make this great. And uh, we were really able to do it. And thanks to uh, Joey Bigger was, uh, he did his game Chaosmos, and he did it so beautifully that I said, hey, I need your help on, on my thing. And, and That's cool. Uh, really happy. Collaboration is always good. All right, well, thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you, for Sam. For stopping by. We appreciate it. We're looking forward to giving that one a whirl. All right.